Hello, everyone. Welcome to one more Key Life session. The Key Life sessions, I don't know if you are already aware of it, but it actually hosts a lot of information and holds information about the projects under the Key Umbrella. So the Key Umbrella holds project, different open source projects. Could you list them, Porcelli? Oops. Uh, let's try. We have the Drones project for Rule mm -hmm. Engine DMN engine. We have the GBPM project that is the, our workflow engine. We have OptiPlanner, our mathematical optimization uh, project. And we also have uh, Kojiro, that is our recent uh, um, work that is cloud native, bringing all these uh, projects to cloud native infrastructure. Exactly. So today we are going to play with DMN. So the guy who's here with us today is the same guy who presented DMN for developers, also created the Learn DMN in 15 minutes. So if you go to the website, you can get started in 15 minutes with DMN. And he's been working with development for more than 10 years already. And I heard that on his free time, Porcelli. He just thought about creating a game using DMN. So, so let's play DMN. Like, uh, bring it, Guy. Hey, Guilherme, Hi, welcome everyone. again. Thanks. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to this talk. So what can we expect for today's talk? Well, you can expect a lot of code because I am a developer and, and I like to talk about DMN for other developers as well. So we're going to have a lot of fun with code, DMN, and unusual things. <laughs> <laughs> Unusual things. Ooh, <laughs> let's see it. It's so interesting to hear different perspectives, how to apply technology, right? That's like that's the fun part to be a developer. You can use the same tool in a different context and have some fun. Likely, this is uh, sounds like it's a good weekend project. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I like to explore different things and think different about the same thing. Uh, this 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 talk is a bit about this. <laughs> awesome. So, two thanks for those who are watching. As usual, you're really welcome to join us in the chat and talk with others. Just interact with everyone. We'll be here on the back channel, on the back stage too, <laughs> chatting with you on YouTube chat. And uh, we'll bring questions to Guilherme during the call, to, during the presentation, if you have any questions. And all the source code will be, will be available for you after the presentation and also the slide deck. So don't worry about it. So, Guy, you can share your screen and start the presentation. No, oh, thanks. Let's let's do this. Uh, can you can you see my screen? Yes. Good presentation, oh, Guy. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's nice. All right, let's start talking about how to play with DMN, right? But before, uh, let's. I, I'd like to show some URLs for you. Uh, I, as Perina mentioned, I'm Guilherme. I weekly post on my personal blog here. Uh, and also, I frequently post in the key group blog. When I post in the key group blog, I generally talk more about DMN and our tooling. But on my personal uh, blog, I post more how things work under the hood. So I talk about front end performance and, and talk, talks like this, more focused on the technology that powers the DMN editor. Uh, also, I'm leaving here my wiki link. Uh, I'm, now I'm pretty engaged on this new digital gardens thing. So if you want to explore my notes, drafts, uh, and scripts, you can check there. Uh, there's a lot of content regarding DMN as well. And uh, after the end of this talk, I will upload these slides here into my website slash talks. So you can, you can check uh, all the information there. So don't, don't mind on, on losing anything. Um, as Karina mentioned as well, I'm the creator of Learn DMN in 15 minutes. Uh, some weeks ago, I released the V2 of the website, and now the V2 is a big enhancement in the in the, in the backstage of the website itself, because uh, the content now lives on every every page lives on Markdown files. So if you don't know too much about front end, you can still improve the content by improving these Markdown files. And uh, the, the previous version, we were mixing the content with HTML and that. That was, that was not a good thing. So feel free to help to make Learn DMN in 15 minutes even better. Another side project that I have is the DMN CLI. Uh, the, the, the goal of the DMN CLI is to bring part of the visual experience that the DMN editor provides to the command line interface. 
Uh, Rarely has some interesting features into the DM and CLI, but uh, if you like to propose anything new, uh, this project's in a very early stage, and I really like to to listen to listen proposals. So feel free to reach out to me. And uh, probably you're having a deja vu because you already saw me in the in the DMN for developers talk, right? Uh, and uh, the talk today, why we're gonna have a lot of examples, the proposal, it's a bit different. Today, we're gonna talk about um, uh, unusual problems. In the DMN for developers, I was trying to show DMN features and I built the examples to be easy to understand and to to see the fitting in the in the problem that we, we were trying to solve. This call, I'm gonna walk through with you with baby steps into an unusual problem, a problem that we generally do not solve with DMN. Today, we're gonna create a snake game with DMN. It's, it, it, while a snake game is an unusual thing, it's, it's more like the real life works. When we're working, we receive a problem to, to our table and we need to realize how to solve this. And generally they do not fit so well in the tools that we have and we need to realize how to, to, to model this problem and make and, and clean this problem and make it works with the tools we have, right? We, and we generally when we see other examples, we, we see the examples that were made to explain the tool. So let's start fresh with this example, this unusual example, and see how we can use this. Uh, when we think about a game, uh, we think about a game loop, right? And the, here we have a TypeScript code showing a simple game loop. Let's uh, take a look at some parts of this. Here we have uh, this set interval function here, and it executes this function game loop uh, every 40 uh, milliseconds. That means that we have uh, 25 FPS. You know, in other words, we're, we're printing a new frame in the screen uh, 25 times in one second, right? FPS, it's, it's frames per second, obviously. And uh, how, how this works from the game perspective, we have this initial state here, this initial state, and we're gonna execute a DMN model that will modify this, is that will receive, oops, spoilers, that, that will receive this initial state here, and we're gonna update the state of our, our game, and then we're gonna paint this in the screen. So it's as simple as this, and we're gonna do this uh, 25 times in one uh, single second. Um, how are we gonna do this? We're gonna have the client side that will run a TypeScript application and we're gonna have the server side that, we, that where we're gonna run a DMN server, right? And probably uh, you were wondering correctly that this code will run in the client side, this game loop will run in the client side and you're gonna do a lot of HTTP requests to the DMN server. Of course, we, we, we could use uh, a socket here and a better approach, but this is just a proof of concept. We're just here trying to see if this is possible. Uh, and one interesting thing is that the here, the backend is based on the sheet executor, which also is the same project that powers the DMN runner, right? And I, I extract the server a lot. And I generally, in my machine, I received uh, 16 milliseconds answers. So it's more than enough that we need to have a 25 FPS. So we're pretty fine here. We have 20, uh, we have 16 milliseconds, and we have uh, uh, 40 milliseconds uh, in, uh, before the call in the next loop, right? So uh, from the performance perspective, this is a pretty valid proof of concept. Uh, all right, now let's think a bit about our problem, which entities we're gonna handle. It's generally what we do. When we have a problem, we think about the entities that uh, that involve this, this problem. Uh, generally, a snake game runs in a grid, right? And it, in this case, won't be different. We're gonna have this kind of grid and we're gonna have these coordinates here. So here we have, oops. Here we're gonna have this zero, zero coordinate. Here's the zero, one, zero, two, and so on. And the same vertically. So we have it, this coordinate and we have the, our main entities, which is the snake and the apple. The apple will be, uh, oops. the apple will be this simple coordinate here. And the, the snake will be divided into two 
uh, entities, the snake head and the snake body. The snake body will be a list of coordinates, right? So this is how we're gonna approach this snake game problem. And now we're gonna uh, see how this will work in the DMN side and the TypeScript side. Let's, let's check the, the data types editor here. In the data types, uh, we created uh, a structure data type called coordinate. And this coordinate has two fields, X and Y. So this is how we represent a position of something into our screen, right? And here we created this extra data type here called list of coordinates, which is the type is coordinate, but it's a list of coordinates, right? Uh, the, the apple data type, the T apple, it's a, it's a T coordinate. And the snake data type, the data type that represents a snake will be uh, composed by two fields. One is the head and the other is the body, which is a list of coordinates. So this is how we represent this more, a bit more complex entities into the, into the DMN editor. From the TypeScript side, we have the same, the same thing. We have here, we have the snake, we have the head of, uh, as a single coordinate, and we have these two coordinates here because the, the, the body is a list of coordinates, right? In this initial state, we are, the, the snake already has some, some body. Uh, notice that the apple in the initial state of our game has negative coordinates. So the, the first time the apple appears in the game, it's outside the canvas. We're gonna understand soon why we decide to do that. And uh, in the TypeScript side, we have these three extra types here. And they are living here because they are they're primitive types, right? So I don't need to create a, a data type for them. Uh, so these primitive types are the game over state, which uh, uh, the game over by default is false because the, you, the, the user, the player, uh, needs to lose the game to have a game over, right? Uh, and uh, we have the key uh, type, which is a string. And by default, uh, we consider that users are pressing right to have the snake uh, in, uh, being the right direction. Uh, and uh, we have the score, which is the, the state that counts how many apples this snake, uh, this snake already ate. So we have these two, uh, two, two, two sides of our problem, right? We have this back end representation and we have this TypeScript representation, which is the state in the client side, okay. Uh, so when we think about this whole state here, we can think this as this state. This state here is the is the initial state of our game. So we're gonna call our DMN model and we're gonna process a, a lot of things here. We're gonna create a new state for our game and we're gonna update the state variable here. And right after we're gonna paint all the elements in the screen. So probably you're wondering, oh, you, that's not fair. It's not a, a DMN game, right? You're painting things in the screen from another technology. But the, most of the, the logic of the game lives during this execution phase of the game here. The painting logic is super simple. And that's what we're gonna talk about. I, I, I just wanna show you how simple this part it is. So we're gonna realize that this is really a DMN game. It's not a, a TypeScript game, okay? Okay, let's check how we, we're painting things in the screen. Uh, we, here we have the, the uh, DOM canvas element. We're getting the context to D, so we get the context here. And uh, when we, we call this method paint snake, we're just saying, oh, I want to paint a green snake. So I'm gonna pass this, this, this green color here. And then I'm gonna iterate over the head and all parts of the body. So I'm gonna iterate over these elements here. And we're gonna create green rects in the screen. So it's as simple as this, the snake is most is the most complex entity into our problem. The, the apple is just a coordinate, so it's only uh, one rect in the screen, so it's much more simple. So this is the most complex part that paints things in the screen. We're painting things in a HTML canvas, right? And another part that we need to implement in, in the, with TypeScript is this one. We're capturing user commands from the screen. So here we, we're listening key DAO event. So when users uh, press arrow up, resetting key is up, the same for down, the same for left, and the same for right. So, and this is the end of the infrastructure part. Um, 
uh, if you wanna run this after this talk, you wanna run this on your machine. I created this super simple application here, and it the the magic of this application lives on this start command here because it starts the server and the client at the same time. So that it makes uh, things a bit easier. You can just run one one command and then we can run everything. Okay, but I will send the code to you after the talk. Uh, one thing to, to notice is that once we have all the initial state and all these paint functions, when we run the application, we're gonna have this, a static, <clears throat> a static uh, game, right? Because the game is being painted 25 times uh, every second, but it does not have any logic. So if we run the application with the, the way it's right now, we're gonna see this. It's not, it, it does not look like a game, right? So we're gonna fix this now. We're gonna create the magic with the DMN. We're gonna handle the snake state. Because it's a snake game, right? We're gonna, we need to, to make the snake work. So the first, the first part for doing this is to create our decision node that we represent the new state of our uh, snake. So we're gonna call this node snake, and we're gonna create this input node, which is called I snake because it represents the initial state of the snake. And we, are, we also need to create this key node, which represents the key that users are are pressing. So. Let's just uh, set the types correctly here. This I snake is the type snake. And this is the types. Okay. And, um, and the same for the key. And now we're gonna create the decision logic inside uh, of our snake decision node. So the, the decision logic that will, uh, that will teach the, the DMN model how the snake sh should be given the inputs that it has, right? So let's let's create this decision logic here. Um, let's create a context, and this context will have a local variable or a context to entry called new head. This new head will be a coordinate, and the position of the new head will be set by a decision table, and the input of the decision table will be the key that users are pressing, right? And the key is a string, and if the key is up, the x position for the, the, the new place that the head will be will be the initial snake dot head dot x. And the y will be initial snake head y, subtract with one. If the key is down, we're gonna increment one. If the key is uh, the key is right, we're gonna increment one and we're going to keep the y as is and finally if users are pressing left we're going to subtract one from the coordinate x on the head uh, and also we need to change the body of the snake right so here we're going to create another local variable called the new body which is a list of coordinates and the list of coordinates, we're gonna set it based on your expression, where we're gonna concatenate the initial uh, the initial state of the snake body with the head, because we want, wanna make it look like it's moving, right? However, we need to, to remove the first, the first uh, element of this list, because the snake is moving, otherwise the snake will just increase in size. So, that's it. Now we have the new head and the new body. And this uh, context expression will result like this. The head will be the new head, the body will be the new body, and that's it. That's how we set the state of our snake. This is the most complex part of the game. And we, we, we actually did this uh, quite fast by creating the, this new head and the new uh, body position. So let's try this. Let's see how it works in the browser. Um, it's pressing. Okay, and the snake is moving. It's moving when I press the arrows. So it's it's pretty much like this, right? Uh, okay, but it's not a snake game if we do not have a go. So the next step is to create the apple state, and the apple state will be 
pretty much like we created the, the snake state. We're going to create here an apple decision node and uh, an apple an initial state for our apple, which we're going to call iApple. And we connect both. Uh, and we set the types correctly. Oops, I didn't set it. OK, in here, here we go. For the app, we're going to use a decision uh, table for setting the final state for an apple. Here, we're gonna just, setting, just setting the columns. And the input for this, we're going to check if the apple is in the initial state. So that's why I'm setting here apple.x equal uh, negative 1, right? And if it's on the initial state, we're going to set the coordinate to 10. Otherwise, we're going to keep the initial coordinate as is. So with this, we can um, change the, the the apple from the initial state to some state on our on our game. Let's let's check the how it goes in the browser. And now the apple is appearing here. As you can see, the, the apple is appearing here. Uh, all right, but on Snake Games, apples generally appear on random places. And now we need to implement this logic. Uh, unfortunately, few functions do not have a random, random function. So we're going to need to rely on a BKM node that we call a Java function. So let's do this. Let's create this BKM, rename this to RND, set this as a Java, uh, Java kind of BKM. And here we're going to call the Java lang math. So we can call this, this method from directly from the Java world. Uh, and obviously, this method return a number. OK, and now let's call this into our Apple node. So instead of returning 10, we're going to use this random logic to return a random position here. So we're going to call this. And I, I did to, to use this hard, I need to use this hard coded values because I want to I want to I want to have the the max uh, with if the max x coordinate and the max y coordinate respecting the canvas size right so that's why we have 39 and 29 here and as you can see here the the apple now it's appearing on random places when i refresh the the, the screen all right we did it. I just wanna I wanna stop sharing a bit. I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment, and I'm gonna try to share again because I'm noticing the the experience of seeing the game working is not excellent. It's a bit it's a bit clanky. So please that, tell tell Karina and Alex if you you are actually seeing the game moving because for me when I'm seeing here I'm seeing things a a, a, a bit clanky way. All right, so now let's take care of this part of the score state. So now we're, we we want to count when the our our snake eats an apple, and we want to show the score into into our game, right? So let's do this. Let's create here another decision node. It's called it's called is eating an apple, and here we're connecting the in snake into the initial state with this node here. And uh, now we're we're gonna check if the snake head is equal, the snake head position is equal to the apple position, and if they share the same coordinate, the the snake is eating this apple. So that's how we identify if this is happening. Okay. Now we're gonna connect this with the apple node, and. Uh, we're going to create here a new column based on the is eating apple, right? So is eating an apple. And uh, if the snake is eating an apple, we want uh, an output, as in the output of the, 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 the apple state as a random coordinate, right? So now every time that the snake it's an apple, the, the, the apple will appear in a different place. As we can, as we can see here now, the apple is appearing on different places when the snake eats the apple. 
Okay, let's go. Uh, however, we wanna to have a bigger snake when the snake eats the, the apple, right? So in the snake side, we wanna reuse this is eating an apple node. So let's change the logic because if we want a, a big body into our into our snake. So let's use here as the input call of our decision table, the is it an apple node. And uh, if it's true, the body of our snake will be just the, the initial body of the snake concatenated with the initial head of the snake, right? So we're gonna have a bigger, a bigger uh, snake in, as the end state. And um, if the if the, the snake's not eating the apple, then we wanna remove the first element of our list like we were, uh, were doing before. And, uh, if we test this, let's check this, and uh, and now this next getting bigger, right? Let's go. Okay, and uh, as the the last step of this, we're gonna uh, in, increase the 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 score of the player when the player when this snake eats an apple. So we're gonna have the score with the i score, the same pattern that we used in on other entities. And here we're gonna create a decision table for this. So when the snake is eating the apple, uh, the score is a number, let's set as a number. We want the score with, in, one incremented otherwise we want to just keep the initial score and uh, it's it's pretty much like this as you can see here now we're incrementing the the score when users uh, eat uh, an apple and that's it now uh, the, the last part of our game is the game over state because users uh, cannot never never lose in this game right even when the snake hits itself or even when the snake leaves the canvas we do not have the game over state and now we're gonna we're gonna create this game over state here so we're gonna create here uh decision mode called game over which will receive the snake position and the initial state of the game over like this and uh, here we're going to have a context box expression and here we're going to have this is eating itself entry so we're going to check if the snake is eating itself so if some part of the body has the same coordinates of the head then the snake is eating itself. This is how we're gonna check here. So we're gonna create this, this box expression here for checking if they share the same coordinate. And uh, the result of this box expression, in other words, we're saying if the game was already in the game over state, state or if the snake is eating itself, we wanna pick the game over. So. Here, it's it's working. It's working again, and uh, and now we need to handle the case where the, the snake leaves the canvas. So for for doing this, we're gonna use another feature of view. We're gonna check uh, if the if the snake coordinates the, the the head of the snake coordinates are leaving inside the canvas. Otherwise, the 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 snake is leaving the canvas, right? So. Here we're checking the head X. If it's leaving, it's, it's leaving inside the canvas. And uh, and that's it. Let's and uh, and here we have the game over because the the snake left the game. And uh, and that's it. Cool. We created DMN uh, a DMN game. I'm gonna stop sharing again, and I'm gonna 
try to reshare because I'm feeling like the game is not running as I would like. That's not. Yeah, it was running. Okay. And only on this last slide that it kind of gave it, but uh, we can understand it. It's okay. No, thanks. Thanks, Karina. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try something really, really quick here. I'm going to just try to reduce my resolution because I require the game to, 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 to show the pretty fluid, but I'm feeling like they're not as fluid as I would like. But no, I believe that now the screen should appear smoothly. Okay, let's see. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, clearly is there. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and when I did this, I was feeling really, uh, it was really rewarding because in the end of the day, I had this, this, this snake game by using the DMN as the handling the backend logic. And then I noticed that the logic of the game is more complex than the logic of the player, because the player just needs to decide the best key to, to press uh, to achieve the, the apple. So the, the player logic seems less complex than the, the game logic. So I decided to create a DMN player uh, with a DMN model. So I created the player state. And um, in the end of the day, the, to know the right key to be pressed, the, we just need to know where the snake is and where the apple is living. And with this, we can know, we can decide which is the best key. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna show this model too deeply, but why I'm doing this is I'm calculating the distance uh, between every, for every scenario. So if users press up, down, right, or left, uh, I'm calculating the distance between the snake head and the apple with this decision table here. So I here you have, keys by distance. And then I sort all these all these entries uh, to, to know the closest the, the closest and the best approach that I should take to, to achieve the, the apple. And I I do a super naive logic here to check the uh, the valid key because uh, I, I don't want the, the snake in a state like uh, the snake is eating itself to to achieve the apple. I want a valid possible alternative. So with this super naive implementation, uh, I could make the, the DMN gameplay itself. So let's let's see how it goes. As you can see, the the, the DMN model plays the game much better than myself. It's it's quite diagonal, and uh, it plays for some time. It's it's so cool how efficient it became the game like it's so cool. <laughs> yeah right and uh, it's important to notice that uh, it's executing two dmn models uh into in into four in less than 40 milliseconds so it's, it's also important to mention that the sheet executor it's quite efficient as well <laughs> hmm. So I both, and that's it. Both and, the, <laughs> and here both you have the, the game. Are running on the, I'm sorry, Guy. So both the main uh, executions are running on the same uh, project, and the front end, too, everything. Uh, precisely. Actually, the the front end is running into a uh, into a, a React uh, application so development server, and the, and we have the JIT executor executing all the back end logic. So uh, every every in, at, at every game loop, we're calling the JIT executor to execute the game logic to know the next state, and also we ex we're calling the JIT executor asking for processing the player logic. So it, it's executing this this both models uh, twenty five times in a second. So it's it's a pretty efficient but implementation. Will you talk a little bit more about this during the presentation? Just so I know. Uh, uh, no, actually no. <laughs> so I just stopped sharing your screen. So really quickly here, mm -hmm. uh, instead of okay. running, for example, an application with Quarkus that has the DMN engine embedded, what is the mm -hmm. approach that you are using here? Because most of the times during these presentations in the key life, people are seeing this sort of approach. So could you just talk a little bit about this approach that you're using here? Sure, sure. I can. I can. I'm not sure if you see my users. I can share it. it. My... I can share. Oh, it. sure. Uh, actually, e, you can. You'll be able to see here. Uh, 
I'm going to open here like the snake uh, DMN. And the this, this the JIT project is receiving the is receiving the G. the whole model here. Yeah. G, I'm sorry, G. I need you to increase the font size just a little bit. Oh sure, sure, sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna when I open the file, the font will be increased a bit. But uh, <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, let me let me open here the, the snake game logic. Uh, and um, as you I'm not sure if the code will be super super clear but i'm passing the um, the the player model as a parameter to this JIT executor so we're using the same JIT executor uh for executing the player logic and the, the game logic and uh, this JIT executor it's a uh, it's uh it's it was created by by mateo which is a quite powerful uh service because it can receive the the dmn model as a parameter and provides an output this is the same infrastructure that powers the dmn runner so we're reusing this infrastructure that powers the dmn runner with another purpose here because we want to have the flexibility of passing different dmn models because in this case uh i'm in the beginning of the game loop i'm, I'm executing the game.dmn but in the end of the my game loop, I'm executing also the player.dmn. So it's receiving this the, both diagrams as parameters, but it's the same service in the end of the day. And this is this is just a, a TypeScript uh, uh, it's a type, uh, just a TypeScript request. It's a, a simple HTTP request encapsulated into a into a function here. Very interesting. Thank you for the explanation. Yeah, no, no problem. And in this code, it will be available for everyone that's watching and wanna dig this a little bit. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty much what the slide shows. We have here the paint apple, paint snake, paint square, the simple paint functions. <laughs> okay, perfect. So Parchali, is there anything you want to comment or can we follow up with the presentation? Um, one thing to comment is like, it's very interesting to see the performance aspect that uh, Guilherme mentioned. And next time someone asks you about the performance of DMN, you can open the Snake game and play and show. Like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> indeed, indeed. No, OK. But um, uh, back into this, this, this black slide, I, I like to just to mention something interesting about this. this this DMN, this whole DMN game experience that we had here to, together today. I talk a lot about DMN and also I talk a bit about TypeScript and, and this is not random, I'd like to, to mention that now. Um, today we solved a graphical user interface challenge together. We used TypeScript for that. We did some unusual integrations with our DMN runner infrastructure. Uh, we. Of course, we play a lot of with DMN logic here, and we today we see we use it some some more advanced the concepts um, of DMN. We saw, we saw some literal uh, data structures there, uh, and then we did an interesting algorithm for creating the player DMN. Right, so if you like all these things, if you like today to see all this all these pieces uh, connecting together to build some in the end of the day, some fun and interesting graphical application. Maybe you are the, the kind of people that would like to work in the DMN editor tooling. So uh, today, I, when we were seeing all this uh, this code for creating the the, the logic of the, the Snake game, we were using a lot of the technology that we use to build the DMN editor today. So if in the, if you like this and if you like the DMN editor, you totally read to to is to contribute to, to the DMN editor itself. Um, when I when I some years ago when I was not an open source contribute frequent contributor, uh, one thing that intimidates me a little bit was the learning curve of some projects. I felt like it was too difficult to jump in, in and understand the code base. And uh, with this talk, I, I'd like to show. The technology that we use, uh, it's not rocket science, it's uh, its TypeScript, it's DMN, it's things that everyone can understand. And I like to show the technology and I'd like to point you to this blog post that I post, uh, that I'm posting today, the, the DMN contributors, uh, the DMN editor contributors guide. Uh, I will create, uh, starting today, a series of blog posts uh, teaching people how the DMN editor works under the hood. 
So uh, if you like this technology, you'll be able to read these blog posts. And uh, if you spot some error in the editor, you'll be able to fix the, this error by, by yourself and contribute with the open source road. So uh, this, this is the first blog post. And uh, I'm trying to, as we did today with the, the DM and Snake game, where we were taking babe steps and create the snake, creating the apple, etc. That's what I, I, I'm, I'm trying to do with this series. I'm trying to take a bit steps and I don't want to have a um, heavy rating and overwhelming experience. So if you would like to, to contribute to the DMN editor, please take a look at this blog post and leave a comment to me that myself or someone, the DMN editor team will for sure to answer to you and help you to start contributing to the editor. So I, I believe this is the, is, the, is the main message that I'd like to, 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 to leave today. Uh, and also, feel free to contribute to the Learn DMN in 15 minutes. And if you're uh, not familiar with DMN, this is the best starting point I can I can say today. And if you're to take a deeper look at DMN, I'd like to always to to mention the, the DMN uh, book that Edson and Bruce Silver wrote. And that's it that I that I have for today. That, that's pretty much this. <laughs> Hey, it was so great. Karina, you're on mute. That was amazing. Uh, thank you very much for that. It was like, a, and, and even better, you, you have a call to action, like, let's contribute. It, you, you have this, this blog post, this amazing blog post, in, and giving out the, the path to people getting enjoy these open source opportunities to contribute to our tools. That's amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Alex. Guilherme, it was a great session. And I have to say, you surprised me when you had the auto playing DMN uh, logic too. So that was great. So thank you, Guilherme. So I will share the slide deck in the speaker, speaker deck from the key community. Let me share the link with you guys. You will be able to find it there after the session is gone. Please connect to Guilherme if you want to discuss anything. We are always in Zulip. So you can join and talk to other people on the team too. Uh, I don't have the link here to Zulip, but I will, I'll share in a bit. So, Guilherme, thanks a lot for the session today. Oh, thank you for having me here. <laughs> yeah, we sure can come back later to show more exciting stuff about DMN. Yeah, that's a lot of, you need to take a look on the chat later, that you have a lot of interesting conversations, some um, challenge around CS, computer science puzzles using DMN, inspired by your presentation today. Awesome. Thank you, Thanks. D. Have a Thanks great for... day. You too. Alex, I think you had something to share with the folks about the call for paper, right? Oh, yeah. So we want to invite all of you, all the community, to present in these key live sessions. And for that, we have the link that we'll show somewhere in here um, that you can submit to your, your, your presentation, your proposal. And it doesn't need to be not, nothing sophisticated. It's just a few words to share with us your idea. And we can work together to bring in shape that you can present here. That would be great. Yes, everybody is welcome to join. And uh, that's it. We are happy to have you here today and see you on the next Key Live. Bye bye. Bye bye.